Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today I'm putting together a GPU cost per frame analysis, and this somewhat complements the content that Tim published two days ago when he released our April 2022 GPU pricing update. And that did see pricing of graphics cards continuing to trend in the right direction. So downward. Uh, Tim has been monitoring GPU pricing for about a year now, and it is great to see pricing getting closer and closer to those MSRPs. Of course, it is hard to say exactly how excited you should get about that, given that a lot of these products are now 18 months old and will likely be superseded by year's end by much more powerful next-gen hardware. But also, I think had you given gamers the option of buying an RTX 3070 for $730 US or an RX 6700 XT for $570 US earlier this year, they would have jumped at it. So while pricing certainly does still suck compared to 2019, it could be worse, and a lot worse. And if you need any evidence of that, just check out Tim's GPU pricing update for May of 2021. Anyway, for those of you who are now ready to buy and aren't willing to hold out for the next gen products to arrive, because let's be honest, pricing there is almost certainly gonna be inflated and availability will be poor, at least in the short term, because well, that's always been the case. So what should you buy now? Tim's pricing update's great for tracking pricing trends, but that's really all the goal was. It's not exactly a buying guide because for that you'd need some fresh data to create a cost per frame analysis. And that's exactly what we'll be doing today. But before we get too far into it, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by MSI and their gaming peripherals. The GK71 Sonic Mechanical Keyboard includes a premium memory foam wrist rest and packs MSI Sonic Red 35 gram lightweight switches for ultra fast responsiveness and are one of the lightest linear mechanical key switches in existence. Then, taking your aim and shooters to the next level is the MSI GM41 lightweight 74 gram wireless mouse complete with Japanese Omron switches and class-leading Pixar PAW3370 optical sensor. Enjoy 80 hours of clean flick shots on a single charge, plus NVIDIA Reflex support too. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so the goal here is to test all current generation AMD and NVIDIA GPUs to establish FPS performance, and then take that data to create some cost per frame comparisons. In total, there are 17 current generation GPUs. I suppose there's now 18 if you include the RX 6400, but we don't have one of those yet, and I don't think we're missing out on anything of value here. Anyway, because there are a lot of GPUs to cover, I've only tested them in six games, but I've chosen the titles quite carefully based on our recent 50 game benchmarks. The titles used to gather our data include Red Dead Redemption, using the medium quality settings, Rainbow Six Siege, again medium, Far Cry 6 medium, Hitman 3 medium, Dying Light 2 with medium, and then finally Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which has been tested using the high quality preset. I'm not going to go over the individual data for each game, instead I've calculated the geo mean for the six game sample, and I'll be using that to report the cost per frame. Now the reason for using the medium quality settings in almost all of the games tested is to allow the entry level models to achieve a reasonable level of performance. And then at the high end, we can look at the 4K data. Admittedly, this isn't a perfect way of doing this, but there really isn't a perfect way of showing all GPUs in the one graph without having differing quality settings. So this is the best I've been able to do for this particular comparison. It is worth noting though that I've tested at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. So we can look at the higher end GPUs at the 4K resolution. Finally, all testing was conducted using the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with DDR4 3600CL16 memory and resizable bar was enabled. Just lastly, before we get into the graphs, please note pricing information was gathered on the 20th of April and that pricing will be a few days old by the time you see this video, so expect some movement, though I do expect that overall the bulk of the data will be valid. Either way though, it's not really a big deal as the most valuable information here is the frame rate data. Simply select the performance tier that you're interested in, then take your current pricing, and then divide that by the average frame rate and you'll get your cost per frame. So while I will make some product recommendations, be sure to check pricing of the relevant products in your region so you know which option makes the most sense for you. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with the 1080p data, we find that the best value GPU available right now in the US is the Radeon RX 6600. 
coming in at a cost of $2.98 per frame in our testing. That makes it 16% cheaper than the 6500 XT per frame. And what's shocking about this is that the 6500 XT would have to be priced around $170 US to just match the cost per frame of the 6600. And it would be doing so with half the VRAM, half the PCIe bandwidth, no hardware encoding, and a complete lack of AV1 decoding. So even as the 6500 XT approaches its MSRP, it continues to be a terrible value product that should have never been sold for a dollar over $150 US. And in fact, I think $100 US or less is far more fitting for this class of product. It's really quite crazy to think this product was selling for $270 US or more just a few months ago. And some reviewers were recommending it simply because it was the cheapest new GPU you could buy. Today though, just a few months later, you can almost get an RX 6600 for that price. The RX 6600 also makes a complete mockery of the RTX 3050 as the GeForce GPU costs 26% more per frame. It might be $10 cheaper according to our pricing data, but at over 20% slower, it's really a bad product. The RTX 3060 Ti stacks up better despite costing more per frame. It's $10 more than the 6700 XT, and it's only around 5% slower. So you could argue features such as DLSS help offset that margin. Now for comparing the higher end models, let's move to 1440p. At 1440p, the margin between the 6700 XT and RTX 3060 Ti remains about the same, with the GeForce GPU costing roughly 7% more per frame. As we move beyond the mid-range though, towards the higher end models, AMD does stack up quite well. The Radeon RX 6800 XT is offering 5% more performance than the 12 GB RTX 3080, suggesting that the 6 game sample is slightly more favorable towards AMD when compared to our 50 game testing. But we are only talking about at most a 5% discrepancy here, though do keep that in mind. In terms of overall FPS performance, the 6800 XT, RTX 30, 3080 12 GB, 3080 Ti, and even the RTX 3090 are all pretty similar. The 3080 Ti and 6800 XT are a good matchup here, as they both averaged 157 FPS in our testing, but the Radeon GPU is currently 24% cheaper in the US, making it much more appealing in terms of cost per frame. Now, as you might expect, NVIDIA AMP GPUs do stack up better at the higher 4K resolution, and now the 6800 XT is on par with the 12 GB 3080. Again, with a wider range of games, the 3080 would pull ahead by around a 5% margin, but unfortunately, it's just not possible to test that many games with 17 graphics cards for this single video. Having said all that though, the data for the mid-range to low-end models is pretty well spot on with what we saw across 50 games. So I suspect the lower quality settings is what's favoring AMD's high-end models a little bit more. Here we're looking at half a dozen AMD and NVIDIA GPUs in that 90 to 105 FPS range. And this includes the Radeon RX 6800 XT, 6900 XT, GeForce RTX 3080, 3080 12GB, 3080 Ti, and the 3090. Now the cheapest GeForce option here is the original 3080 for $1,000 US, whereas the 6800 XT is down to $920, and that's an 8% saving. It's not a huge saving, but if you don't care about ray tracing performance and DLSS, then it's probably worth it. Where the GeForce range becomes ridiculous is with the RTX 3090 series. The 3090 at $1,700 is just dumb, and the 3090 Ti at $2,000, well, it's equally silly. In my opinion, the high-end battle really is being fought out between the 600 XT and RTX 3080 Ti. Both offer a similar level of performance, while the GeForce GPU costs 21% more, which is a bit too much in my opinion, even considering the superior ray trace performance and DLSS. Back in February of this year, I did compare the 6900 XT and 3080 12 gigabyte head to head in 50 games. And at the time the GeForce GPU was priced between $1,600 and $1,800 US, while the 6900 XT was more like $1,500 to $1,600 US, making the 3080 12 gigabyte one to $200 more expensive, which is still the case today. I think ray tracing and DLSS allows the GeForce GPU to command a 10% premium, but 20% is getting a bit too steep in my opinion, and at that point I'd strongly consider going with the 6900 XT or 6800 XT. Now, although the bulk of our audience is US based with just 5% of our viewership generated locally here in Australia, I thought it would be interesting to check out pricing trends in a few other regions. So let's start with Australia. The best value option here is the 6600 XT, narrowly beating out the 6600, Basically, both Radeon 6600 series GPUs represented a similar level of value. 
Then we have the 6700 XT, which was just able to beat the 6500 XT in terms of cost per frame. But you know, we take the 6500 XT's cost per frame with a grain of salt, given all the issues with that product. We're also testing with PCI 4.0, meaning it would stack up far worse if we use PCI 3.0, not to mention higher quality textures. The best value GeForce GPU here in Australia is the RTX 3060 Ti or 3060. The 3060 Ti costs just 2% more than the 6700 XT per frame. So again, depending on the features you're interested in, the GeForce GPU could end up being the better value choice. For those of you after a high-end GPU in Australia, the Radeon RX 6800 XT appears to be the way to go at $1,350 AUD, as it is 23% cheaper than the RTX 3080 Ti for the same level of performance. Even if you go off our 50 game data where the 3080 12GB and 6800 XT delivered the same level of performance, the 6800 XT would amount to $9 per frame, making it 16% cheaper per frame when compared to the 12GB 3080. And that's quite a large premium to pay for superior ray tracing performance and DLSS support, but of course, that's up to you to decide if those features are worth it. Finally, the 6900 XT is pretty poor in terms of value here in Australia, and as was the case in the US, the 3090 series is super dumb. Finally, I have some Euro pricing data, and here we do see some significant changes in pricing trends. Using prices from Mine Factory, we see that the 6500 XT offers the lowest cost per frame at 210 euros, but of course the RX 6600 is significantly better value, despite costing 86% more. Interestingly, the RTX 3060 Ti ranks very well here and is the best value mid-tier product, offering 6700 XT Lite performance at a 10% discount. The RTX 3060 is also very competitive with the 6600 XT. But again, as we get to the higher end parts, AMD does stack up really well. The 6800 XT, for example, can be had for 950 euros, while the original 3080 costs 1140 euros, making it a whopping 36% more expensive. Then when compared to the RTX 3080 12GB, we see that the GeForce GPU is fetching almost 50% more per frame. And if we go off the 50 game data and say that these two GPUs are comparable in terms of performance, then the 12GB 3080 still comes out costing 41% more per frame. So based on the mine factory pricing, you'd without question purchase the 6800 XT over any 3080 or 3090 series product from Nvidia. So there you have it. This is where things stand on the GPU front as of April 2022. Now, of course, pricing is still highly volatile and it's possible some models will have changed by the time you watch this content. So my advice is to work out which performance tier you're after and then compare the current prices for those products. The numbers here serve as a rough guide, but if you want to get highly accurate data for certain matchups, then please be sure to check out our 50 game benchmarks. We've updated the data for most of the GPUs at this point. The only model I strongly recommend you avoid is the Radeon RX 6500 XT and likely the new 6400 XT, which I might look at soon. Unless these models are significantly less than the RX 6600 in terms of cost per frame, they're simply not worth buying. On the other hand, the RTX 3090 and 3090 Ti should also be avoided, not because they're bad products, but because of the current pricing and the MSRP is also quite horrible. Anyway, hopefully this guide was helpful to those of you trying to buy a new graphics card right now. And if it was, be sure to hit the like button and you can also subscribe for more content. Also, if you'd like even more Harbour and Box goodness, then please do check us out over at Patreon or Floatplane. Links for those are in the video description. You get access to monthly live streams of Tim and myself, Q and A's, behind the scenes content and access to our exclusive Discord server. So pretty cool stuff there. Check it out if you're interested, but if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.